Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Daily version of the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Uh, my name is Scott. I'll be your host today. Jorah is making an appearance on the video. He's showing you all his butt. Yeah, all right, cat. This is what happens when you do the podcast late in the day, and the cat's been downstairs, and he's trapped, and he he can't escape. He comes over to bother you. He's a good kitty, though. Hey, Jorah. Anyway, it's uh, it's one fifteen. Uh, I've done the podcast today once before. I was going to post it. I didn't like it. Didn't like it. It was, I was in a grumpy mood this morning. Woke up a little bit late. I woke up at like 7.30, which, uh, you know, lately I've been trying to get up at 5.30 to do the show. And, uh, hey, bud. You, yeah, you're not going to leave me alone today, are you? No. No. Um, yeah, you know, I had a whole bunch of things I needed to do. I, and I kind of, you know, I, I, I watched, you know, I, I watch motivational videos on YouTube. I watch a lot of them, probably more than I should. Because if you're watching motivational videos, that means you're not actually doing anything that you've been motivated to do, right? <laughs> so I almost feel like it's uh, you know, a little di- diminishing returns uh, on the on watching the video. Like you get caught up in watching them all the time and just being inspired. It's like, oh, I'm so inspired that you don't want to ever do anything. And it's one of my one of my pet peeves with the uh, you know with these with the speakers the motivational speakers and why I don't think I could ever kind of transform and be one is uh, once you motivate people if you're good at your job you've motivated them they should be moving on you know I mean there shouldn't be people that just con- continually go to motivational speaking seminars because if you're good at your job you would have motivated them and they wouldn't need you right. Uh, it's sort of like, so I'm now I have not paid for like, you know, Tony Robbins seminar or anything like that. But, um, you know, I, I find it interesting and I do find some, sometimes there are takeaways to a lot of, a lot of these things. And, and you try to kind of find, you know, if you're cat, cat, really this cat, this is insane. Yeah, I know he's taken over. He's totally taking over the podcast. You're, you're going to want to watch this if you're if you're listening to the podcast version. Anyway, um, so I was watching Eric Thomas the other day. He's one of the guys I watch a lot uh, when I feel like being yelled at and belittled, um, being told that I'm not doing enough work. But that's kind of usually what I need. You, sometimes you you know you get to know these guys like Jordan, like Jordan Peterson is another one. I'll watch him when I want like a nice calm. Um, <clears throat> voice to tell me, to, to explain to me why I'm a loser. Uh, <laughs> but Eric Thomas is the guy I use when I really want to, I need to be berated and yelled at. So I was watching him the other day and, you know, he was talking about, um, you know, if he, he, he put this in the context of like going somewhere to, for, like going to your family's f- for the holidays. And he said, maybe I'll, I'll link the video if I could find it again. Um, he said, uh, you don't want to be the person that gets there and goes, oh, I'm here, everyone. Here I am. Guest of honor, whatever. And then you're like the annoying person that adds no value. You don't help. You sit there. We watch TV. Let everyone wait on you. You, uh, you know, you act like you're the, the focal point of everything, but you're, you've really done nothing. And so his thing was, uh, if you can't, let me see if I can get these words right, because I, I, I had them and I can't. Uh, if you can't serve... You should just observe. Got it? If you can't serve, then observe. And I thought about that in the context of this podcast and what we've been doing here for the last three years. And my thought was this, is like, when I, whenever I do my interview podcast, I always end it with, I'm no expert, I'm just ordinary. Because when I started this podcast, I was really kind of a newbie runner. I didn't know all the intricacies and everything, you know, and I, I do have a pet peeve of people who kind of claim to be experts and you know, with, without the proper background, I guess, or proper experience. I think a lot of people just claim to be, or people that claim to be experts over stupid stuff, like uh, any, basically any sports reporter out there. Um, it's like, look, you watch the games, so do we. Uh, you know, unless you were, like, I, I, guys like Tony Romo, I find are, they're 
fa- fabulous because they've had the experience, they've been there. And, and as a culture, a lot of times we don't, we don't, we try to kind of say that experience doesn't matter for some people. Oh, well, uh, you know, we should have some people that have never done, you know, just because you played doesn't give you an advantage. Well, I think it does. I think it does. And, you know, so sometimes when I see some guys, I, I feel like some guys are better than others in terms of commentating. And, uh, and I, I wait that. I do wait that. So I guess my theory is <clears throat> I don't like, I, I, and trust me, when you're in this business and you kind of hang around, you try to, you're trying to, you know, expand and be social and talk to people. I can't tell you how many people out there profess to be experts about running or exercise or diet. And they're just, I mean, they're really just out there collecting the followers and the likes and they just enjoy the attention. And I don't think I've ever been like that. I kind of felt like I was here to, uh, like he said, I was here, I was observing. I was interviewing people for two years, started doing this podcast daily and I'm kind of, and I'm still observing. I'm still trying to figure things out. I mean, you hear, hear my workouts every day. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's never a science with me. It's what can I fit in? Where can I squeeze it in? What can I do? What's the smart thing to do today? It's never, there's never any kind of, you know, um, uh, super science, I guess, to it. It's, I'm just figuring it out. And, and in reality, I think sometimes the science is overblown a little bit. It's overblown. Um, and then, you know, there's people that are pretend to be experts, people who are experts, people who've gone to college for this stuff, gotten MBAs, doctorates, whatever. I don't know sometimes where I fit in. So I feel like when I, when I listened to this guy speak and I heard that line, right? So uh, if you don't know how to serve, observe until you can serve. That was kind of the line. I kind of liked it. I liked it. So I'm sitting here thinking, all right, I have observed here for three years. Um, how can we change this around and serve? And I was thinking about some of the things that we did, right? The ordinary marathon. Raised a ton of money for charity. Uh, that's the second time we've done it. I'm putting together the video as we speak. Um, it's almost done. And I got to tell you, this thing, uh, when you're putting this together and you're kind of going back and forth and you're looking at all these pictures of all these people, some of them, you know, more than others, some of them, you know, you know who they are and you're so happy that they participate, even though you've never met them. Uh, you know, some people I've known for three years, ever since the podcast started. Some people I've known for a couple months. Some people have just reached out to me in recent weeks, joined the race and did the race, participated and, uh, and they comment on my stuff and they, you know, uh, and I love it and I love it. And just... You know, I guess sometimes I feel like, all right, we had 67 people join the Ordinary Marathon. We had 13 people show up for a 5K, and I'm thinking that's really underwhelming. And, you know, I need to put a better, put forth a better effort here. Like, I'm not doing my job. And then I think, I I look at these pictures, and I'm like, man, like, we did, we did some good work. We did some good work. I mean, you guys went out there, you ran. And I'm, I remember thinking, like, I, I didn't participate as much as I did in prior years. Although, you know, we did a lot of things. We did the 5K. We did travel to New York to meet people and run. Uh, we did things. We just probably didn't take as many pictures as we did in prior years or, or in the prior year. So I felt a little bit, I don't know, I felt like I didn't do enough, you know. And then I'm putting this thing together and I'm like, wow, like, you guys are incredible. You guys are absolutely incredible. All, all of you guys that participated, uh, all the pictures that I had, I couldn't believe how many pictures I had. I didn't think I had that many. And I'm going through the video and I'm like, man, I had to leave a lot of pictures out where last year I just, last year I was looking for extra pictures to throw in there. This year I had too many and I, I have, I've had to kind of make some decisions and, you know, some, some editing choices, um, including editing out my own baby daughter <laughs> from some pictures. Uh, but I got to tell you, like doing it all for hours and hours and then kind of working on it and then taking the time to kind of sit back and watch kind of the final product, even though it's not done, but to watch like all the hard work and, you know, and see all the people that participated. Um, it was like, it's touching. It's actually, you know, I wouldn't say I was moved to tears, but I was moved. Let's go with that. Um, definitely moved. Like it's definitely touching that. You know, something that we created uh, was, you know, we were able to produce this from something we created. And I can only think that going forward, it's going to get better and better. I had a call with Scott Frassard yesterday. We talked about uh, the early registration, which we're opening, uh, I think, tomorrow. 
pretty sure tomorrow, Ordinary Marathon 2020 registration will be open. Um, Ascension Multisport Garmin Vivo Active 3 giveaway. That's what's going on. So if you register for next year's race tomorrow or within the next two weeks, you will, you will have a chance to win a Garmin Vivo Active 3 uh, watch, a beautiful watch. Stephanie has one. So, and, and again, thanks so much to Nick uh, at Ascension for for donating the watch. I mean, his idea, guys. It was, you know, um, I don't know. He, he helped us out. I can't even tell you how much he helped us out at the 5K and uh, his idea. So, you know. Thank you all uh, for getting involved, and and hopefully we'll see you know we'll see some people register like super early. One caveat to note, you know, I one of the parts of the video that I love when I make the video is to watch all you know. You guys take pictures of your bibs, and we get the personalized bibs. Uh, if you join you early enough, you get the personalized bib. You guys are so creative with that all all the time, and it was so great to see. Uh, and I put a whole bunch, a little montage of all the the bibs, which was great. And uh, the thing is, you might be saying to yourself, well, if I register now, how do I know what I want to be on my bib for, you know, a year from now? We're going to give you the option to change it. So if you enter the bib that you want now, if that should change within the next few months, or at least we'll, we'll have a deadline, it'll probably be like April 1st of next year. Uh, if you need to change the name on your bib, you can change it at any time. Just contact me, contact Scott Frassard. Uh Also, T-shirts. We're going to put the option to order t-shirts on, on there. It is on there. We don't know what they're going to look like yet. We're going to do like a little, I think we're going to design the logo. I think this is where we're going with this. We're going to design the logo. Uh, and then we are going to show you guys, some, give you guys some options, give you some options, uh, and then do like a little, maybe like a Twitter vote or something like that. And, and, you know, hopefully we'll get a good design going. Not that my designs were bad. I mean, you guys love the orange two years ago. I think you love the blue this year. It's all good. So, uh, but I don't know if you want to trust me. Who knows next year? So you can order the shirts if you'd like. We just don't know what they're going to look like yet. But I think if you watch the video, like ordering the shirts, that's like half the fun is putting the shirt on, taking pictures and getting them in the video. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I love, I, I love this thing. I love what we're doing here. And, you know, going back to the Eric Thomas thing, I think that you know what I say? It said, uh, uh, "If you if you can't serve, observe until you can serve." I liked it. I liked it. So now I'm thinking, like, how do we serve more? How do we? You know, I'm trying. Not that I'm trying to generate a business here, because I don't want to be that online business guy either. You know, too many people. Oh, this is how I made money online. You know, shut up. No, you didn't. You're making money now by telling people who want to make money. Who, who think that there's a possibility that they can, you know, they make easy money by creating a blog. Uh, you want to show them the way. And in reality, you're making money showing them the showing them the way when you never did it. Uh, that's what I, I don't like about those videos. I, that's the way I feel. Um, not in all cases, obviously. Obviously, some people are truthful. But I feel like there's a, a certain, uh, certain, definitely a certain bunch of a group of people that their job is to make it seem like they're rich and they got rich doing easy things, and then they're going to sell you the way how they got rich, when the way they really got rich is by selling people like you the way that never really worked to begin with. Anyway, I'm off on a lot of tangents today. Guys, it's been a crazy morning. So I was talking about, I was thinking about how do we serve? How do we serve? And I'm thinking, you know, I might not be an expert in kinesiology, or, you know, we had... um who oh, was the guy? I think he had his book here. Uh, Mike Swinger. We had Mike Swinger on, uh, you know, physical therapist. I might not be an expert on on injuries and, and recovery and stuff like that. Uh, I don't even think I'm an expert. I'd be an expert coach. Uh, I think I could be a good coach. I, I've thought about getting like coaching certificates um, just to kind of become legit and, and get involved. I think I could be a great coach in terms of motivation, in terms of getting things done. Um and I think I could put together a plan with just my experiences. And I think I know where to get answers if I need them. Um, that's a possibility. And that's a poss possibility to serve. And you got to do things for the right reason too. You know, it's not like, um, you know, it'd be something that I want to do. That I want, you know. Uh, it'd be cool. It'd be cool. Um, what else? Uh, so when I was thinking about 
th- those are the kinds of things that I was thinking about. Like when it comes to serve, I was also thinking about the whole story of how, because it's so prevalent, right? We talk about it all the time how prevalent the weight loss story is, or you know, just even if it's not weight loss, if it's just get off the butt, off your butt, and move, or um, you know, maybe you came out of college and you're an athlete, and all of a sudden the athlete, all, all there's no practice to go to, there's nothing to do. You got to pick yourself up and go to the gym and and you get, you know, you fall into that rut because it's hard to do and hard to maintain when you're trying to do it just by yourself. And you don't have that, for me, this is my own story, really. You don't have that practice that you need to go to for two hours a day and you don't have that game to get ready for. Uh, You don't have your teammates that are relying on you to know what you're doing and be in good shape. Um, And then all of a sudden one day you wake up 10 years later and you've gained 50 pounds and you're like, what the hell did I do? What just happened? What did I do to myself? I think I could speak to that crowd. I've been through that, you know, and, and it obviously it, it, you know, it overlaps into other areas as well, but um, I hesitate to like be like a motivational speaker, that kind of person, uh, only because what I just said, I, I don't like, I don't like the nature of the business, you know, and I don't like, I, I don't, I definitely don't, I, I don't know. I don't like, uh, watching these videos and seeing so many people in the audience and then just knowing they're, they're dying to be motivated and they think they can come out of that and just turn a switch and be rich. Like it doesn't really happen that way. It's a long process unless you go to the casino and win a lot or something that, you know, sell your, sell your ticket to, you know, uh, Tony Robbins and then go to the casino, throw it on a, in a slot machine, pull the lever. That's about, uh, that's about the same chance as you are of getting rich just attending a seminar in my, in my own estimation. But I think what you have to do when you watch these things is you have to have, what are you looking for? What are you trying to, to, to get? Um, like I said, when I need to be yelled at, I turn on Eric Thomas. When I need to be talked to, I talk, I turn on Jordan Peterson. I don't really watch Tony Robbins. I'm not a big fan. Um, but there, you know, there's just stuff like that. You have, you know, you have to kind of figure out what's the message that you need at a certain time. That's what I, that's what I, that's the way I kind of look at it. Um, so yeah, I, I could see myself doing something like that, but, uh, and just speaking from experience and trying to kind of, you know, share, share that experience and what the things that have happened, how I went from 280 pounds to, to finishing an Ironman, uh, and then DNFing an Ironman and then trying to do it again. Hopefully we'll do it again. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've been thinking of the last couple of days. And, you know, this morning I got up and I podcasted. I did a, like a 15 minute show and it, I was kind of grumpy. It was, I was late. I was, I had things to do. And when I was finished, I was like, man, that message sucked. That The message I put in that podcast was just, I, I didn't get my workout done yesterday and I'm, I got things to do. I don't want to do it. Um, so I, I processed the podcast after and I held off and I said, you know, I have to go do some errands. I had to run some errands. Let me get this stuff done and then I'll come home and redo the podcast. So I went to get my registration sticker for my car, which you guys know really bothers me lately because I have to get the car inspected. Can't do it without the sticker. So I drive to Springfield to the DMV, the RMV it's called here. Um, This building that I've been to a dozen times in the last eight or nine years since I lived here and I drive up and I'm like, wow, look at all the parking spots. This is great. I've never seen it like this. I get to the front of the building and there's a bunch of pickup trucks and vans. And I'm like, oh, this is weird. And then I look at the top of the building and where the letters that used to say registry of motor vehicles, there the letters themselves were gone, but you could still read it from all the dirt that had collected behind the actual letters when they removed it or whatever, whatever kind of oxidation or whatever process goes on behind those letters when they remove them. Uh, I know Springfield's doing a lot to revitalize the city. I'm kind of hoping they're just knocking down this old building to build a different one. Um, so I'm like, damn, where do I go? So the next thing I do, I sit in the parking lot and I and I kind of look up the nearest RMV and plug the address into my navigation. And it says no address, <laughs> no viable address. I look on on the map. I try to figure it out. I'm like, I don't really know that area. I decide for now I'm going home. So now... I'm going home. I call Stephanie and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I can't believe this is like, this is the journey that I'm going on. It's like just to get a damn sticker to get my car inspected. Brand new car. She just, Stephanie just drove into the place. I need an inspection. Here's my registration. Bam, inspection done. Go home. I, I'm on my third week, well, second week, I guess, of this, of this adventure. Um, 
so I got home and I'm like, all right, I want to, you know, I want a podcast. And I'm like, geez, uh, the reason I didn't podcast before, I didn't, po- I didn't post that was because it was a bad message. Now I'm angry. <clears throat> I'm angry that the, the DMV moved and I'm angry that I don't have my sticker, that I need a stupid sticker. Um, so I looked up the nearest, I keep saying DMV because I'm from New York, but it's RMV. RMV. I looked up the nearest RMV, 26 minutes away. Um, which is great because now I have to drive all these miles on my lease, my brand new lease. And I have, by the way, I have to take trips to Canada and to Lake Placid. My lease is dead. It's dead already. I didn't have, I had the car two weeks. It's like, I might as well just buy the car now because I have miles. I'm going to blow through these miles. Still don't have the hitch, by the way, that better, that phone call better be coming soon. Otherwise I'm going to flip out anyway, (laughs) but I didn't want, I didn't, you know, I, I, I'm typically this like cynical uh, sort of sarcastic, cynical tone that I always have. And I kind of want to morph it more into like a positive message. So I looked up that, you know, I, I went to, to the town of Chicopee, 26 miles away, whatever it is, 22 miles away. Uh, no, 26 minutes away, sorry, like 12 miles. And uh, I decide, you know what, I got to get this stuff done. This is why the podcast is late today. So I drive out there, I go to the motor vehicle, um, I go in to get my sticker. I talk to the guy and the guy's like, here, he just goes up, he gets me a sticker, comes back. I'm walking out. I got the sticker. I'm like, yeah, I got my sticker, you know, thank God. There's like stickers all over the parking lot. People dropping them when they walk out or whatever. There's stickers all over the place. I'm like, this is how, <laughs> like, they couldn't just mail me a sticker, right? They couldn't just send me a sticker. They're all over the place. I feel like I could have just went to like a art store and made a little, you know, I don't know. So that was frustrating. Then I went, went, then I just drove directly to the inspection place, got that done, waited online. Here's, just, I'm debating on whether to tell you guys this story. I, I'll tell you the story quickly. Guy walks in, we're all in the waiting room. And like, I'm there for like an hour waiting for my inspection to get done. And there's all like, there's like five people in the waiting room. It's a very small waiting room. And there's one bathroom. And this guy walks in, he like looks around, sees the bathroom, knocks on the door, goes in. I kind of forget about him. He's in there for a good amount of time. So you know there's something going on. Basically, he's not taking a leak. There's other things going on in there. You know, whatever. But uh, about 10 minutes later, the door opens up and he walks out. I'm like, oh, geez, I totally forgot that guy was in there. He walks out. He goes right out the door and he just walks away. And I'm like, okay. And then the smell entered the room. That man crushed that bathroom and all of us in the waiting room just kind of like looked at each other and we were like, like jaw drop. It was jaw droppingly disgusting. We all had to get up and walk out of the Jiffy Lube waiting room just to go in the outside air. It was just, anyway, that's, that's just my story. <laughs> I love telling, uh, by the way, we're going to, maybe we'll talk about running a little bit on this podcast, but soon, um, Anyway, so I got that stuff done. I'm kind of, and you know what? That stupid little stuff weighs on you for, if you don't get it done, it weighs on you and it it annoys you and frustrates you and you know you got to get it done eventually. And that's why I try to get that stuff done immediately. It just, it always lingers. It, and when it lingers, it gets worse. It only gets worse because it just takes, you know, you got to do it. You're trying to make time in your head to, to get it done. You don't want to do it, um, but you have to do it. So that's that's my message for today. Do the little things. It took 23 minutes to get that message out. Do the little things. Um, encourage people. That's another thing. Serve. If you can't serve, observe until you can serve. Got that? Uh, uh, is it dark in here today? I feel like it's, are you wondering, wondering why I'm wearing a sweatshirt today? Freaking 47 degrees out this morning. 47 degrees. It's June. Christian Lee, thanks for telling me, but uh, apparently... The lake in Montreblanc. How was that one? That was a good one, wasn't it? The lake is 48 degrees. I'm not going in 48 degrees. You guys better order some freaking sun up in Canada because I am not going in the water if, if it's 48 degrees. I got a sleeveless wetsuit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not adding sleeves. I'm not getting a new one. I already had to buy two sizes last year because my, my one from two years ago didn't fit me. So I have two. Uh, so come on, you know, Canada. Global warming, got to get that global warming together, uh, you know, 
and, and just heat up that lake. You got, you know, either that just get, maybe get like some bubble wrap or something. Doesn't that, doesn't that work as like a solar cover? You can just put it over the entire lake for the next two weeks. So you get a little greenhouse effect and heat up that lake. I want it to be a nice 78 degrees. I think that's good for me. Uh, maybe just that, you got to make it that wetsuit legal, right? So what is that, 73? I don't even remember. Um, that Just make it just barely wetsuit legal. So, you know, so we can go and enjoy the lake. Um, Sam's not going with us actually this week, uh, that, that weekend. So it's probably good, um, that she's not because she would have, she would have wanted to go in the lake. And if it's 48 degrees, even a 10 year old's not going into 48 degree, 48 degree lake. That's ridiculous. I think that, you know, 48 is like tickling the Titanic, you know, the Titanic, uh, movie with all those pop human popsicles bobbing up and down. That's going to be me. That's going to be me in Montreblanc. <laughs> a couple weeks away from that, by the way. Anyway, listen, I got to get going. It's been, I shouldn't have done this podcast so long, but uh, listen, the video is coming out. If not tonight, definitely tomorrow. Registration is opening up tomorrow. We're going to do the uh, Ascension Multisport giveaway, Garmin giveaway tomorrow. Uh, well, we won't do the giveaway tomorrow. It's just open. So you're going to want to register for that to be involved. Um, that's it. That's all. That's all for today. So let's get moving. I got a lot of crap to do. I haven't even started working out. I did nothing yesterday. I just lifted. I was going to talk about that, but now I'm, it's, it's too late. So um, I got to go do a run. I got to do a bike, maybe in reverse order. I don't know. We got to get after it. Remember, every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it, guys. Remember to like our video and subscribe to our channel.